Hey, let's talk the best green cards out of Core 2021 for Oathbreaker. Welcome to this collaboration with the Oathbreaker Thoughtcast. In this episode, we'll be looking at the 10 best new green cards for your Oathbreaker decks out of Core Set 2021. If you're new to the channel, we focus on Magic the Gathering and Oathbreaker content, and if that's what you're into, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and set yourself up for notifications so you know when we make new content for you. This is Chad, and I'll be paraphrasing Alex Ender's article. If you want to read the full article, I will put a link in the description. Another MTG preview season has come and gone, which means it's time for me to do my top 10 series for the new Core 2021 cards for Oathbreaker. My top 10s are based on 1. How strong I think the card will be in Oathbreaker, and 2. How many different types of Oathbreaker decks I can expect to see the card played in. While I do try to stay as objective as I can, these are ultimately just my own thoughts and opinions. With all that out of the way, let's continue with my top 10 green cards from Core 2021 for Oathbreaker. Number 10, Track Down. A while back on Trip Twitter, somebody called this a green equivalent of Serum Visions, and I think that's actually a pretty fair comparison. Track Down isn't as mana efficient as Serum Visions, but it does offer a very similar effect. Being able to dig four cards deep is an all right deal for four mana, even at sorcery speed. I definitely wouldn't run this kind of card as a signature spell for any list, but it could be a fine inclusion in the 58 of many different creature-based strategies. Bond of Flourishing and Oath of Nyssa are two other cards that offer similar effects in green, and both of them are a bit better than Track Down. Even still, this card will be a fine option for many different budget-friendly green Oathbreaker lists. When you're talking about two mana cards that can dig you deep and get you card advantage in a creature-based strategy, I think of Winding Way. And this is no Winding Way. Number 9. Grook's Uprising The first Oathbreaker that immediately came to mind after I read this card was Kioira, Behemoth Beckoner. In addition to sharing the same triggered ability as Koira, Garuk's Uprising gives your entire board evasion, an effect that's particularly useful when you're filling the board full of huge creature threats. I also like how this card can immediately draw you a card upon entering the field, unlike similar enchantments like Colossal Majesty or Elemental Bond. I suspect this card will ultimately be limited to seeing play in stompy and or creature based ramp strategies. But the card advantage Garuk's Uprising offers will be very helpful for those types of Oathbreaker decks. To be fair, there are a lot of cheap janky creatures that could make for an extremely fast deck of value with Kiora and this enchantment as a base. Number 8. Invigorating Surge Green has always been the strongest color when it comes to targeted pump spells, and this combat trick can pack a really big punch when put into the right deck. Invigorating Scourge is essentially a one-off instant speed Hydra's growth, and just about any 1-1 counter strategy can easily make use of this kind of effect. On its own, Invigorating Scourge can only give a plus 2 plus 2 bonus but this spell will become much more devastating when the target creature already has one or more counters on it. I would probably lean towards playing this card in the 58 rather than as a signature spell, partially to surprise my opponents with it and partially due to the spell's starting mana cost of 3. Invigorating Scourge will ultimately only see play in designated 1-1 counter strategies, but I'm sure it will be quite the unpleasant surprise for whoever finds themselves on the receiving end of one of these. Number 7. Pride Malkin. Speaking of cards that care about 1-1 counters, Pride Malkin is a little kitty that can do a lot of damage with its static ability, which is very reminiscent of Tuskar Captain. One issue that 1-1 counter strategies can easily run into is having to get past opposing chump blockers after buffing their board and Pride Malkin's static ability is a perfect way to get around this problem. The Enter the Battlefield trigger on this creature is also a nice touch since 
It, one, provides immediate value, and two, it works very well with other 1-1 counter strategy staples such as hardened scales. I doubt this card will see much play outside of dedicated plus 1 plus 1 counter strategies, aside from cat tribal lists perhaps, but Pride Malkin is a fine addition to that archetype. Bad Kitty, no give trample. <laughs> Number six, Wildwood Scourge. Wow. Plus one, plus one counter decks have really gotten a lot of new toys. Wirewood Scourge comes at the same cost as many Hydras, with the additional bonus of being able to steadily grow over the course of the game. It is worth noting that Wildwood Scourge's trigger only puts a single 1-1 one -one counter on it, unfortunately. However, this slight downside can easily be circumvented by playing cards that distribute 1-1 one -one counters among multiple creatures. It's also a tad unfortunate that this Hydra does not come with Trample, but this downside can also easily be circumvented, as we saw a little earlier in this list. As with number 7 and number 8 on this list, Wirewood Scourge will likely only see play in dedicated plus 1 plus 1 counter strategy decks, but it is quite the potent addition to that Oathbreaker archetype. Some Planeswalkers to keep in mind for plus one plus one counter strategies are Veraska Swarm's Eminence, Jane Yangu Wildcrafter for his ramp, Arlen, Voice of the Pack, and almost any green white Ajani will work well. Number five, Primal Might. Prey Pawn has gotten an upgrade. Primal Might is not the most mana efficient pump, but the fight effect stapled onto it helps make up for the shortcoming. It's also worth noting that X can be zero for this spell, which would make it into a regular old prey upon. The fact that this spell can also be used to temporarily boost is almost an incidental upside. By green standards, this card is a solid piece of creature spot removal, and I could see it slotting into many creature-based strategies. I don't think I would run Primal Might as a signature spell, since the commander tax would really hurt its power level after the first use, but even still, I'm sure it will make a fine addition to the 58 of a number of different creature-centric Oathbreaker decks. I myself could see slotting this into an Infect or Death Touch deck strategy very easily. Number 4, Spore Web Weaver. Spore Web Weaver actually reminds me a lot of Hooded Blightfang, another new card I discussed in an earlier Top 10 article. They are both three-costed 1-4s that are great on defense, and they can both provide a little extra life gain. Unfortunately, Spore Web Weaver isn't nearly as effective on offense as Hooded Blightfang, and I'd say Hexproof from Blue isn't quite as relevant as Death Touch. Having said that, there are certainly still homes for this little fella in the format. There are many Toughness Matters decks that could likely put this card to good use, as could decks built around fighting and or pinging their own creatures. Running Spore Web Weaver, Insert Aristocrats, and Token Strategies may not be out of the question given its ability to create Saperlink Sacrifice fodder. I doubt Spore Web Weaver will become a format staple, but it will still be useful for a number of different Oathbreaker decks. Agreed. Number three, Garuk Unleashed. I haven't seen much hype surrounding this card as far as Oathbreaker is concerned, but this iteration of Garuk looks like a very solid and open-ended Planeswalker. His plus one ability is very useful for pressuring our opponent's life totals and Oathbreakers, and having multiple opponents will make it easier for Garuk's minus two ability to really be a minus one ability. Although these effects are probably best suited for Stompy decks, Garuk's abilities don't shoehorn him into any particular strategy, and I suspect Garuk Unleashed will end up being more popular as an inclusion in the 58 than as an Oathbreaker since he can fit into so many different styles and color combos. Though I am sure he could also be a respectable Oathbreaker in his own right. I for one am looking forward to trying this guy out in a variety of Oathbreaker lists. Number two, Garuk's Harbringer. Now that's what green card vantage should look like. 
The triggered ability on Grook's Harbinger is a great way for creature-based decks to keep their hands full of gas. Best of all, for Oathbreaker, this ability will trigger whether the Harbinger hits an opponent or an opponent's Planeswalker. This card would obviously be even better if it had Trample, but having Hexproof from Black is pretty nice consolation. Garouk's Harbinger isn't the kind of card that can slot into every green deck, but I am willing to bet this card will quickly become an Oathbreaker staple for creature-heavy strategies. Number 1. Elder Gargaroth I've seen a few other players call this card the Green Baneslayer Angel, and I think that's a pretty apt comparison. Elder Gargaroth doesn't give any immediate value when it hits the field, but it will reap more than its fair share of value if it's given the chance to attack or block. The different options offered by its triggered ability will also help ensure that Elder Gargaroth will be an impactful play even if you are behind on the board or are low on life. This strength is further augmented by Elder Gargaroth's bundle of keywords which allow it to be effective on offense and defense at the same time. Best of all, none of these abilities force Elder Gargaroth into any particular strategy. Almost any deck playing green could justify running this card. I feel pretty confident in saying Elder Gargaroth will prove to be powerful enough to become a green Oathbreaker staple, and I greatly look forward to winning games with the help of this monstrosity. What are your favorite green cards from Core 2021? What green cards are you excited to try? Make sure to tell us in the comments or on Twitter, and I will be back with the top 10 multicolored colorless cards from Core 2021. Check out our Deck Tech playlist or the YouTube suggested video here. Thanks again, and I hope you enjoyed spending time with me and the Oathbreaker Thoughtcast.